Helen has prepared this reading uh, carefully. And so it's actually written in the ancient Hebrew script without any types of vowels. Kohen Midian, Vayan Ha, Elatzon, Ahaha, Hamipahar, Vayavo, El Ha, Elohim, Horeva, Vayeva, Malak, Adonoi, Elam, Elapat, Esh, Metohu, Kasane. Say how incredible this is for me. And again, pardon me if I start to cry. Um, everybody in my life is here, almost my whole life, you know, uh, in this moment. That when I read the section where it says that, uh, what, it, what is your name? And God says, I am that I am. Now, we've heard that sometimes nowadays, but I had never heard that before. And so when I read that, it was as though the, the Torah, it was as though like I had put the book down. I am, I'm being, to, I am that I am. That meant to me, I'm alive. I am really exist. I'm not some guy, an invisible guy up in the sky. I am. And now when I think about it, it's like I am alive. And now I think about life. I mean, isn't it amazing? What is life that we're alive? When God says to Moses, you are, you know, I'm sending you. And Moses goes like, who am I that you should send me? Who am I? And don't we all feel that sometimes? I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not talented enough. Um, so here now I want to tell you my experience wasn't quite uh, the same as Moses, but I had an experience of being told something. I got a message which has changed me in my life. Uh, and that was the first Sabbath that I did. Uh, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. and. Um, a friend of mine, Eve from my Zohar group, where we study infinity, uh, said, it's like a retreat. I said, a retreat? Oh, I can do a Sabbath if it's like a retreat. That I know. I don't know a Sabbath, but I know retreat. Anyway, I wake up Saturday morning, and it's dark, because I wake up at 5 a.m., and it's dark. And I sit down in my seat, and I think, can't turn on the lights, can't do any work can't, you know, call somebody on the phone or turn on the computer, no electricity. So I sit there in the dark and gradually I watch the light come in through the windows as the sun rises. And then I hear the birds. And I think, there's nothing to do today. <laughs> <laughs> for the, you know, it's, it's like five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I, I mean, the Sabbath is over like 7 p.m. I mean, you know, and so it's sort of like, I feel like I'm entering this dimension, this timeless dimension. And then I get a message, send a message to Helen. Um, hiya. <laughs> and I hear, be generous, Helen. Be generous. And I know it doesn't mean just material generosity. I mean, it means giving from whatever gifts you have gotten from this lineage, because it ain't mine, it ain't my ego. It's whatever, and I am not allowed to judge them. Am I good enough or not good enough? Give what you have, be generous with that. And then I hear, do your very best. Do your very best. And I know that means my very best. I don't have to be the great improviser. <laughs> I don't have to be the best at anything. I have to do my very best. That's all. It means I can do that. I can do my very best. I mean, I may not be, you know, the greatest singer. My sister has that. <laughs> uh, and then I hear, but the end result is not in your hands. 
So all I have to do is my very best. But whatever happens at this bat mitzvah, not my fault. <laughs> in someone else's hands. So I can relax, you know, because all I can do is my very best, which is what I'm trying to do, you know, here with everybody. And uh, so I'm hoping, as I said, there's people from every moment in my life here and, you know, COVID and Zoom, all this, how this miraculous moment, it may not be the, the opening of the, of the Red Sea, but for me, this is so miraculous, you know, to have everybody here together, hopefully that we're experiencing this all together when I'm 78. <laughs> um, and um, so I think, I think that's enough for now. Uh, you know, now this is the part where I invite everybody, not everybody, but people who um, are gonna speak. And a man sitting in front of his house in a plaid lawn chair called out to my dad, how old is your little girl? Seven and a half, my dad replied. My little girl is the same age and that day changed my life forever. We became friends. I learned what a friend is. We competed in Jack's Punchball Croquet Hide and Seek Monopoly and Sorry. We wrote plays. We played dress up. We climbed jungle bars. We rode bikes. We made jewelry. We started a club. We called it the Little Ladies Club. We wrote plays and dress up and everything. But the most important thing we did was to meet at a corner in between our house where there was a little patch of grass. And it was there that we searched for four leaf clovers. We believed that finding one was a guarantee of good luck and happiness forever. She always found more than me. We thought about luck and happiness and what was behind a four leaf clover suddenly appearing. We talked about life and its mysteriousness. My friend was a seeker of truth. She still is. I have been blessed by her warmth, kindness, honesty, curiosity, and love since I was seven and a half years old. Okay, Judy Schatzow, it's your turn now. Very good. I have to say my Hebrew name is also Haya, so a new bond we have, Helen. I hate Zoom and I hate speaking into cyberspace, but I love Helen and that's why I'm here today. I met Helen when I was 15 at camp. We became good friends and that was the first time Helen was hugely helpful during a difficult time in my life. We lived in different towns about a half hour away from each other. She and her family welcomed me into their home and it became a refuge for me in high school. This year, the second time we helped each other, dealing with craziness of COVID, living in Trump's America, health issues and fears. It was very profound and I could see and feel how deeply spiritual Helen had become. I have seen her long path from Muktananda, India, Naropa, Buddhism, Est. The great thing about Helen is she took the best of each and made it her own. She never lost herself in any tradition. Finally, Helen had to leave New York and go to Maui to find Judaism. Many might travel in the other direction. I can't talk about Helen without talking about Sammy. Without Sammy, I don't know if Helen has the same spiritual evolution. He is so important to who she is. He has grounded her, she adores him, and he has become an important spiritual teacher to Helen. Mazel tov, Helen, I love you. Uh, Pat Cervelli. Uh, Pat? So I'm, I'm one of Helen's newer friends. We met when we were 25 and both in Women's Liberation. And at that point, my life opened up to adventure. Helen is an adventurer. And that was a time for everything new, 1968. We had so much fun. We laughed so much. Everything was funny. And Helen was and is the funniest person I know. And I think part of that is because she's so honest. 
we did we had many adventures together a lot of time in mexico um hitchhiking around in guatemala and jamaica california new york we just had fun lots of fun but besides being fun as she is with all her friends she's been a big help in my life she is always been there to listen and support me and to tell me the truth and probably the only person I can really hear it from because I trust her. Um, I know I wouldn't still be married. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I wouldn't still be married 40 years later if it wasn't for Helen. Helen, the Catholic godmother of my daughter, Bridget. I love you my best friend forever. My, my daughter, Rebecca. Hi, Anne Helen. You did an amazing job chanting today. May not have always been, you may not always be in tune, but you chant with your whole heart. And uh, <laughs> you're in tune with the world and you give your whole heart to the world and to the people around you. Growing up when other relatives saw me as just the youngest of the three children, my Aunt Helen saw me for me um, as a unique individual, and I always felt a very strong bond. I'd be one of the people that has made me laugh so hard that I've cried lots of times. Um, uh, what a community treasure. I too, I think I knew about Haiku Helen through all the ways she promoted comedy and wonderful uh, community connections first. Um, I have reveled in what a beautiful, loving, prayerful priestess she is. Um, I'm a big fan of magic. Uh, she's an amazing actress, improviser. Uh, her, her magician ability is phenomenal. Uh, she's so tricky and loving and sneaky. And uh, <laughs> uh, I am that I am is way more fun with uh, Haya. Uh, Sam Espinoza from uh, Helen's Wonderful Son. Hi, everybody. Um, so, Helen, um, my mother. Uh, I'm going to be turning 31 this year, and I've had the privilege, I've had the, the honor of being her son and watching her, watching her really grow over these years, um, especially now. I think she's really become the person who really I think she always wanted to be and it's been such a such a treat seeing that seeing her her come into her full being um, I wouldn't be the man that I am today without her as my center especially during these times she's a light she's a beacon of hope, not just for me, but for everyone, I feel. And personally, I feel if, if there was ever someone who was doing God's work, I think it would be her. She's helped so many people. She's opened the hearts of so many people. And she, uh, she saved me. Um, I was adopted from birth and I, uh, my country was in a, 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 a dangerous, tumultuous uh, period, and she came, she, she saw me, uh, and that was that. And so I've had the distinct pleasure and privilege of being raised by her. And, uh, and it's just, uh, she's just an amazing human being. Lech Rakala, 
Everyone has been talking about uh, Helen's life and all of the kinds of things that she did. And I have written a song parody to, to life l'chaim. The 70s changed her feelings. With Buddhism, she found some peace. She followed the Dalai Lama, yoga and inner calm, off to an Indian ashram. Computers came in the 80s. Dari now called for her skills, but a wedding has made us say, computers, another day. <laughs> Drink to the new bride, what thrills. We'll raise a glass and sip a drop of schnapps in honor of cute Sam, who changed her life anew. We know that when good fortune gave her such a treasure, it thrilled our whole family too. Then off she went to Maui <laughs> with young Sam at eight years in tow. Computer improv and reading palms. Now Torah chanting psalms. <laughs> Host to Helen, hooray! Hooray! Mazel tov. <laughs> I, I first met Helen as an improv partner, as someone who was able to put on this really strange European accent, Eastern European accent, and play partisans, gangsters, sometimes princesses, sometimes astronauts, <laughs> role of teaching classes. And I became in some way Helen's teacher. And it was an honor to be Helen's teacher because everyone who's a teacher learns more than anything from their students. And Helen has become my teacher. And what I've learned from Helen is something about what the Torah is. And the Torah is first of all, a song. It's a song that reverberates through us each day. It's a song that we sing as part of our existence, as part of our life. One of this, and what Helen has showed me is something about how an entire life, how so many different experiences and so many backgrounds and so many worlds that she's been in are all woven into a reverberating song mm -hmm. that walks with her at each moment, mm -hmm. a song that draws other people in, a song that lends power to her words, to her smiles, to her hugs, and to her interactions with everybody that she meets. And we have an identity that places our two feet on the ground. We have an identity that's woven from so many generations that have their traces in our bodies, their traces in our cells. How all this wisdom that comes from the earth somehow plays itself out in our own lives. And we can walk time-worn paths and sing songs that have been sung a hundred and thousands of times before and have them give us echoes within. And I saw Helen shining with this type of light and being this type of rabbi and being a teacher that she is. And I understood something about all this tradition that I've come from. And I've learned something from someone who was once my student. <laughs> so I wish you mazel tov on this day. <laughs> Everybody join me. Die, 
been so wonderful to see everybody. And uh, you know, and the family that we have here, the Kritzlers, the Wellicoffs, the Bryans, um, the Espinosas, uh, and everybody, as I said, thank you so much. And I hope it's been as wonderful for you as this has been for me. And uh, you know, the angels, yes, Susan, <laughs> the angels are with us. <laughs>